Hey everybody, it's Brian Burns. Welcome to this episode of Sales Questions. Uh, today is kind of a combination of the career advice uh, podcast and the sales uh, brutal truth podcast, and it's but it's answering questions. And questions I most likely hear about from salespeople are career questions. Uh, I put it on this podcast because it's sales focused only. Uh, so I hope you're listening to this. I'll tell the two people who asked the questions uh, about this. I did get a kind of an uproar after my episode I dropped on June 6th. So check out that at the very end. I kind of go on a little bit of a rant because I want everybody who's listening to this to be aware. If you consciously turn it down, it's one thing. But if you consciously ignore it, it's a very different thing. You live in a time where the mere mortals, people like you and me, can make insane amount of monies working for a company. You don't have to be an Instagram model. You don't have to be a, a podcaster like myself. No, trust me, it's the, I don't make the money off the podcast. Or some magical talent that none of us possess. I'm a mere mortal, finished in the bottom 10% of my high school class. I went to college at night while I sold shoes during the day and ran software tests and learned how to code during the day and eventually got into sales. Too, too late for me, not too late permanently, but later than I would have liked to. And this is why I encourage you to get into B2B sales. And what people, the pushback I typically get is, oh, I don't know anything about this thing or that thing. Uh, th- th- Understood. You don't. Okay. Uh, But today you can basically go on YouTube and learn about everything that they do before you even go in there. Write down every word they say that you don't understand. Wikipedia it up. Google it up. Find out what it means. Then every word you don't understand in the Wikipedia, search on that. And yeah, you'll build a tree of words that you are learning, a vocabulary of that industry. And and people say, well, it's a lot harder work. Well, I got to tell you, uh, nine out of 10 people who are joining the SDR graduate school, the sales development graduate school class. Now, this is a, a year-long class. It's open all year. It doesn't take a year to go through it. I mean, you can rush through the content at your pace. It's all open. But you get access to me uh, every other Friday and to ask questions, get feedback, uh, talk to somebody, sh- understand what other people are doing. Now, the people that are getting into that class are coming from B2C. They're Starbucks managers. They work at Verizon Wireless stores. Uh, They do door-to-door sales for Comcast. Uh, They work at Walmart. And so far, the highest paid person is mm, a little higher than mid-50s, $50,000, target income to W-2 take home. Now, that is a little bit more than the base of the SDR. Now, a base and a target income are two different things. It's usually 50% base, which is around 40 to 45, 48,000, depending on where you live. Now, you can check this all out on LinkedIn salaries, uh, as well as Glassdoor, or just Google it uh, for your particular geography and company. It's pretty transparent today. So don't take my word for it. And, you know, I'm, I'm just reporting what I see. Now, that is the, t- the base salary, okay? Double that is your target salary. That means if you're a, you know, an A minus, B plus player, you're going to make that target salary, uh, depending on the company. Uh, you know, some companies you have to be an A plus player to make that, and other companies you, have, you can be a C plus player and make that. And, you know, it all depends on the territory and the timing and all of this and the maturity of the company. But... Think about it. I talked to a Starbucks manager, and she said, I asked her, what's your typical day like? Well, I usually have the morning shift three days a week. The morning shift means the store's got to be open at 5 a.m. Open, meaning coffee is made, uh, store's clean, it's ready to serve customers. So you have to be there before 5. Yeah, 4.30. So what time do you have to get up? She goes, sometimes I can sleep until 4. I go, are you in the military? (laughs) She makes a whopping $43,000 a year. And I go, how many hours a week do you work? And it's supposed to be 40, but it turns to be like 45 to 48 because I've got to cover for people who call in sick. I'm trying to get a promotion. And 
Uh, and why do you do it? I go, well, I worked my way up from barista. You know, college wasn't my thing. I tried it for a year, but I just didn't get into it. It was super expensive, and it seemed like a waste of money. Okay. Um, and I go, and she was concerned, you know, can I get a, a SDR job without a college degree? And I go, well, depends on the manager, but most of them will. Uh, most that I talk to don't care about it. Some do. Some of the older school people do care about it. And she she looked at it as, oh, well, that would be about what I'm making now. I go, no, 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 no. It's not what you're making now. The base salary is what you'll be making now. And you'll have to show up maybe by 830 in the morning. Would you like another three, uh, three and a half hours of sleep? <laughs> and now you got to ask yourself, is she working harder than I am? Probably. Is she working harder than you are? Uh, probably not. I know you're all hard workers and everything, but she's clearly working that hard, but she's not getting the reward. There's little to no upside. Uh, her working is basically to become a district manager where she'd probably move up to 60 or 70 K a year and have to travel around from store to store, cover when managers, you know, flake and more nightmares. And maybe after 15 or 20 years, she'll, she'll become a regional manager and when somebody dies or leaves, and maybe get up to 80K a year. Now, on the path that I'm talking about, business-to-business sales, now it depends on your industry, because one of the questions I got is, you know, I'm kind of capped out at 200. And I go, okay, well, that that's not very good. Um, you know, a lot of people are happy with that, and if you're happy with it, congratulations, you, you got it. Um, but if you want to make more than that, and at least have the ability to make more than that, and today... Not only can we do it, but we can automate it and uh, outsource it and have all these technologies and uh, labor arbitrage, basically hiring people who make one hundredth of what you make to do 80% of your job, the hard part, the research, the appointment setting, the uh, context uh, setting, the uh, building up a dossier on the people you're talking to so you know what they care about. All of this meeting prep and meeting follow-up and planning uh, can all be done by some virtual assistant somewhere for pennies on the dollar. Now, I show you this in the course. Now, you got to say, okay, so why don't you do that? Uh, of course, you know, it's going to take some out of the comfort zone. Every time you change a job, it's risky. Believe me, I've made some bad choices that I thought were obvious choices. And if it looks obvious, it's probably risky, <laughs> Honest, honestly. But if you're in the wrong industry, and I say this all the time, and I understand people have got kids and homes. So you got to understand a couple things. One, okay, the base salary is one thing. It's a target salary. It's what you really can bring home that matters. So you got to judge that for yourself. I can't judge it for you. You've got to kind of look at it, look look at what the other reps there are making. Uh, what's their view on the percentage of people that make quota? Don't ask it during the interview, though. <laughs> you know, find out uh, via somebody, like a backdoor reference. Find out from somebody who left there. Uh, they may be bitter, and that's okay, um, but they'll be brutally honest with you, typically. Uh, find out, uh, you know, because a lot of companies view 60% is fine. That's not really that good. What you're looking for is a company that wants like 70 to 80% of people making their number. Uh, the industry average is below 60. That's not good. So that means that the target income isn't realistic. So you have to bake that into your equation. Then you got to bake in your ramp time. Uh, it's all up to you. How fast do you learn? How much time will you put into it? Uh, and again, are you going to be working harder? Uh, maybe for the first three months, maybe. But after that, it, it, you know, we've, we've got 24 hours in a day. How hard are you working now? If you're working at Starbucks or Walmart or the Verizon uh, wireless store, you're working harder than any sales development rep I know, Right. You can't sit down. You're on your feet all day. You got people complaining about their latte is doesn't have soy milk in it. <laughs> you know that's what you got to deal with for forty three grand a year, right? For for not forty hours and, and the worst hours possible. So what I'm trying to open your mind up, whether you take the course or not, is that B two B sales is the best kept secret on the planet. 
I'm, I'll give you some examples. The people I see today, the people I coach and help, I don't do one-on-ones anymore, but some of the people in the uh, closing the complex sale, they range from making, you know, the low end is 200 At the high end is, you know, you, if I told you, you wouldn't believe me. So I'm not going to tell you, but I, I'd say three to 500 for an A player. Um, a Maverick, 500 to seven figures, over seven figures, uh, honestly, today. And you can look, Google it, Google like um, highest paid sales reps in any industry. Just Google that and you, you'll find out. Uh, and what this is, is enterprise selling. And you can say, oh, I got to be like 50 years old to do that. No, no. A lot of these people are in their mid thirties. You know, can you do it the first year? No, probably not. Uh, do you have to be smart? You have to be sales smart, whatever that means. You know, the, the, the things that I talk about, smart. You don't have to know calculus or differential equations or, you know, how to put a, a round object into a round hole. <laughs> you, know, you, you have to understand people. You have to be able to get meetings. You have to understand how the complex sale works. But is that harder than getting up at four in the morning? No, not really. Honest, uh, is it in, is it some unique talent that only few are gifted with? No, I can teach it to pretty much anybody who wants to learn it, and is willing to take feedback. You know, most people the their main obstacle is themselves. They talk too much. Uh, they can't take feedback. They're very sensitive. Their feelings get hurt if they're told that there might be a better way. There's always a better way. Even if I come up with it, there's definitely a better way. I learn a better way every day. <laughs> I made that my mantra one year. There's always a better way, and tomorrow you'll find it. You lose a deal, you'll find a better way. So, so here's my message. My message is get the best job you can in the best industry you can at the highest level, you know, with a, a good base salary. I understand not wanting to become a, a you know, a, a sales development rep first. Um, try to become the, the, the sales rep, the, what they call account exec. This is a stupid little structure they've created. It used to be called inside and outside, but since almost everybody's inside today and outside is um, becoming less and less um, the distinction, it's both mostly based off of functionality than it is based off of travel. So, that I would go for that role um, to do your research. I, I mean, like research the the bejesus out of everybody you're going to interview, the company. Search, see if they've ever been interviewed on a podcast, ever done a YouTube video, ever pu- published a blog post. Them, their company, every little detail. You can get the job, and if you if you take the the course, the you know how to start a conversation, get the meeting. That is actually perfect for getting an interview at a company if you can't be represented by a recruiter. A recruiter that gets paid by the client, not paid by you. That's a red flag. If you have to pay somebody to get a job, that, that's not a good thing. Why? Because they, they're, all, they don't, they're not incentivized to get you a job. They're incentivized to sell you, you know, a website, a LinkedIn poll, a LinkedIn profile review. It, it, it might be worth it. You know, I'm not saying it's not worth it, but don't expect them to get a job. They'll, they'll polish you up to get a job. They'll coach you to get a job. Uh, they may get you. An, I, I don't know. I don't know that space. I honestly don't. I've never had to deal with that space. I've always had recruiters calling me. And it took, you know, of course, I had to prove myself first. And that took, you know, probably a year and a half. But that was a long time ago. A long time. <laughs> Longer than I hate to remember, but today it's so much easier because th- there's fifty thousand openings in the U.S. I googled it. I did it. I figured out how to use the Google, and there's fifty thousand. I think fifty three was the actual number just in the United States. Now other countries it may be different. I don't know many other countries. I don't travel as much as I used to, but to just do some research. To, to determine, see see what the pay is, and why, why is the pay important? Because we're we're only going to be young for a certain amount of time. 
and we think we think we're going to live forever, and hopefully we do, but we're not going to have the energy that we currently have. It diminishes. Trust me. I remember being in my twenties. You know, I, I could work eighty hours a week and, and then go running, but uh, that 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 changes. <laughs> Trust me, it does, and it changes for everybody. So it, it, you got to make hay while the sun is shining. The old farming saying. So not only do you only have this amount of time, right? And some of us are already into some of life's um, boundaries, shall we say, kids and houses, and we've built up our burn rate. So that kind of restrains us from taking risks. Like, you know, if I had kids in college, I, I wouldn't have gone out on my own. I have no kids. So for me, going out on my own um, was... Uh, a lot less risky. I, I had plenty of money in the bank. Um, I, I had a skill that I, I thought could transfer very easily uh, to what I wanted to do, which was really uh, train, help salespeople, help companies get their sales organization in shape and compete against their competitors. Now I wrote a book and everything. And, you know, so my, my, my demands weren't, I was at a different point in life than you might be. If you're in your 20s, that's the time to take risk and be careful about building up that burn rate. If you're in your 30s, 30s to 40s, that's like the golden time, you know, because that's when everybody wants to hire you and you're still, you got a ton of energy and hopefully you can take feedback. If you can't take feedback, sales is going to be hard. Because we get feedback every day, all day. And usually it's not positive. <laughs> usually it's don't call me, remove me, blocked. Uh, you know, And we, we can avoid that by being smarter in a lot of ways, but not completely. And we all always have pressure from our managers. And that's the, the, the nature of sales. But that exists in B2C as well. You know, People in the, the Walmart line, they want to get home. They want to buy their DVDs or whatever they buy at Walmart and get their butt home. Uh, they, they just either can't afford Amazon Prime or to have nothing to do with their day or that, you know, the kids need diapers, whatever. My point is that you are already doing the work. Why not get paid as much as you can for it by getting into the right industry, the right role and the right opportunities and maximize it? Now, if the company across the street paid 2x, 3x what your company is paying, what would you do? You'd cross the street, of course, right? So it's, it's up to you. I just want to make you aware that this exists out there. If, if you know friends that are getting in, coming out of college and they don't know what to do with their lives or they're doing silly things with their life, they're working in retail or at Starbucks, you know, for minimum wage, they could get on the phone or sending emails, becoming great at social. I, sh I show everybody how to do this. I'm telling you, I, I teach people who don't know English how to do this, honest to God. <laughs> you know, uh, so I basically make videos so that I don't have to communicate with them. It is that simple. It's all about understanding people. And my point is, so to answer the two questions, one question was, how do I take a step back in my pay? This person is making six figures and they look at the SDR role. What I would first do is try and get the, the account exec role where the base is closer to 100, targets 200. If you can't get that, then you got to make a judgment call. You know, can I, can I negotiate a six month, three month type of accelerated thing where you prove yourself? Or do you just just hold out to find a full account exec role? Now, two, you know, three to six months is going to pass in three to six months. And we're all going to be here, hopefully, in three to six months. So when we think about time, we, we think about it in the wrong way. We think if we have to pay that amount of time that that's going to screw things up. Well, it, it can screw it up financially. Let's say you, you, because that tar that target income and base income, you got to think of what the real take home is, not just the base salary. Now, that this is why I do not encourage people to go out on their own. You know, I see videos all the time on YouTube about people trying to become life coaches or bloggers or social media this and that. And 
as for somebody who's played in that space for a long time, I, I highly discourage it I, from an income standpoint, from a career. I, I think it's certainly hobby and sideline, side hustle, and somewhat necessary as part of your main job, you know, maybe a couple hours a week uh, to put something out there and connect with people. I, I har- highly encourage that. But as a, as a career, uh, I think it's like becoming a stand-up comic or becoming a band player or an actor. It's that type of win ratio, win to loss ratio. Now we see only the winners. We don't see the millions and millions of losers. Uh, losers is a pejorative of the people who aren't making a penny off of doing it. So that that's why B two B sales is so great. Is you don't have to go to college for it. It takes months to learn to start. The income is uncapped. Right, the demand is unwielding. If you look at as sales development managers and any sales job, anyone who knows how to sell is in high demand right now. And not that the main reason is because so few people know how to do it. There's a lot of people doing it, but there's not a lot of people who know how to do it. And that's the real gap that I'm trying to help you with the podcast and with the training. Sorry if I've rambled on about it. Check out my rant on the Brutal Truth June 6th episode. It was about leading your customers through the sales process. I kind of riff at the end about it, but I really want to fire you up to make sure you're aware of this opportunity. If you consciously are not interested, I totally respect that, but I don't want you to suffer. I don't want to see great salespeople bringing home 100K a year, 40K a year, if they don't want to. If they really aspire to make a half a million, a million dollars a year, you can do it. You can without the risk of being an entrepreneur. Now, I'm an entrepreneur. I've got 100% risk. You know, if people don't pay, you know, I've got to take it out of my savings to pay. And that's a lot of risk. That's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of, uh, you know, gambling about every action that I take. You know, is the podcast worth it? Is YouTube worth it? Is LinkedIn worth it? How much time should I spend on everything? Should I do more inbound, more outbound? Should I, what should I, what courses do people care about? You know, should I do one-on-ones? But one-on-ones take for all my time up. All of these things I had to decide. I don't, I didn't have to do that at a company. Now, obviously, if you work for somebody else, and that's kind of what kicked me out of the the market was I got sick of working for people that weren't that good. And and eventually you run out of the good managers because they either move up or move out. They retire. They go do something else. They get sick of the game. Uh, And what ends up happening, and, and certainly what happened to me was, you know, the CRM started taking over and everyone was trying to turn sales into an administrative role instead of a, a customer facing role. And that just annoyed the hell out of me. But um, I'm not saying that that has changed. Uh, I think that it's been automated. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Sorry if I ranted too long. Uh, Keep the questions coming.